Hello, everyone. In the last session, we talked about yin yang balance, medicinal diets, and balanced diets. In this session, we will talk about five tastes in harmony, choices of seasonings, and cooking methods. Color, aroma, and taste are the joint standards that the Chinese use to evaluate the quality of a food. Color refers not only to the beautiful color of the food, but also to the layout and design. Aroma refers to the fragrant and appetizing smell of the dishes served on the table before eating. Taste is not only associated with tasting the food itself, but also with appreciation of seasonings and texture. Only when the dish excels in all these three areas can it be considered a well-made dish. Chinese food attaches much importance to the flavor. Five tastes in harmony reflects Chinese pursuit of flavor and eating philosophy. Five tastes are sourness, sweetness, bitterness, pungency, and saltiness. Based on five basic tastes, dishes can evolve into more than 500 different flavors. Of the five tastes, saltiness is the principal taste. It is the most simplistic and most crucial. Salt is needed to heighten any texture in foods. Without it, any delicacy cannot emerge in its full glory. Without taking in salt, people will become weak and lack in strength. But from a health perspective, salt should not be taken in excessive quantities. Sourness is also an important taste in foods, especially in the northern part of China, where people like to eat noodles. It could help digest food and also arouse appetite. Sour taste can also neutralize fishy odor and remove greasiness. Since its function of removing greasiness, people with high blood fat or hyperlipidia are suggested by doctors to sip a little bit of vinegar. In recent years, people believe Vinegar even can help reduce weight, so many young ladies choose to take a sip of vinegar every day. The most famous vinegar is from Shanxi and Zhenjiang. Many families there are skilled at making vinegar from crops and fruits. Their everyday meals are even more dependent on vinegar. Vinegar is so widely used that it is very interesting that in the Chinese language, the word vinegar is used to represent the feeling of jealousy between men and women. Slangs such as eat vinegar, 吃醋, and vinegar jar, 醋坛子, are universally understood in both the North and the South. Pungency is the most stimulating and complex of the five tastes. In Sichuan and Hunan provinces, most dishes are pungent by using chili, ginger, and so on. Pungency can help to reduce coldness and wetness of the body. That's why people in Sichuan and Hunan like to eat pungent food since the climate there is rather wet and cool. Garlic, scallion, ginger, and other spices can also kill bacteria. So, when preparing cold dishes, people like to put these spices in the dishes. Bitterness is rarely used alone in cooking, but variable. When making simmered or braised meat, adding seasonings with a light bitter taste can read the unpleasant taste and the smell of meats and can awaken the tastiness of the food. Traditional Chinese medicinal theories believe that bitterness is helpful for digestion 
and may reduce the heat in the body. Some people really enjoying bitter taste in foods. Bitter melon braised with pork is a very famous dish. Sweetness is a taste popular in Shanghai, Guangzhou, and other eastern cities. When cooking the dishes, cane sugar is often used to add the deep color of the dish and tastes better. These five tastes are the basic flavors Chinese foods have, but the most distinguished flavor is xian. Xian is the most tempting taste in food. Chinese people pursue special flavor of xian. We can't find equivalent word in English for xian. Xian is combination of fresh and delicious. Most foods all contain xian. But it is often dormant, so making soup is often the way to awaken the taste of xian. Chicken, pork, beef, fish, and ribs can all be used to make soup. People in Guangzhou like to drink soup very much, and so they are experts in making soup. Many food ingredients are used to make soups, such as corns. Vegetables and even fruit like pears, apples, and so on. Seasonings will be added in cooking dishes in order to achieve different kinds of flavors. Some seasonings are natural and healthy for people, while other seasonings are man-made, and the less use of them, the better. If you want to make food more pungent, you can add chili, ginger. If you want to make food sweet, you can add sugar or honey. Dried tangerine, bitter apricot kernel can achieve the flavor of bitterness, and are very helpful for the body. There is another seasoning called Chinese prickly ash, which achieves the most numbing flavor. Sichuan food are famous for pungent and most numbing flavor. All of these seasonings are natural, while there are many kinds of man-made seasonings, such as MSG, Wei Jing in Chinese. The use of MSG in cooking can make the food xian. However, taking in too much MSG is harmful to the body. It is not easy to achieve color, aroma, and taste in cooking. Apart from careful choices of food materials, seasonings, cooking methods are very important. Westerners cook simply by frying, boiling, baking, or roasting on fire. In comparison, Chinese cooking uses abundant cooking methods such as stir fry, pan fry, deep fry, stew, boil, steam, braise. And so on. Every technique has its corresponding famous dishes. The most commonly used technique is a stir chow or stir fry. It is difficult for Westerners to comprehend, and the term stir fry means frying while stirring for constant motion. Rolls are especially made for stir frying. Stirring or Tossing food with the wok can assure an even mix of ingredients, making the food just at the right tenderness and evenness. The word "chow" even becomes the general term for all forms of cooking performed with a wok, regardless whether it is deep frying, frying, boiling, or steaming. Stir frying can help to mix better the ingredients so as to retain color and create aroma and better taste. Stir frying also helps to retain nutrition in food, so it is the most popular cooking method. Only by knowing cooking method does a man hardly become a famous cook. Cooking time and temperature. What we call "huo hao" is crucial. It is the most important link in Chinese cooking, and also the most difficult to master.
deep fry or stir fry requires a strong heat. When boiling food with water, moderate fire should be used. If heated and strong fire for an extended time, the food will be dried and not tender. When frying, be careful not to cook for too long, or the food will be burned and its taste will be changed. Making fish demands the most control in heating. For some foods, the more you boil them, the tender they become, such as eggs and kidneys. While other foods will immediately turn stiff if you overcook them for one extra minute, such as fresh fish. Huo hou is really hard to master. Therefore, controlling cooking heat is very important criterion of competition between Chinese chefs. Whether one becomes a famous chef or depends on mastering huo hou. Only when you carefully choose food materials, master huo hou and cooking methods, and appropriately use seasonings, can you cook delicious dishes which achieve beautiful colors and designs, aromatic smell, and wonderful tastes. In this session, we talked about standards of delicious food which are achieving beautiful color and design, aromatic smell, and wonderful tastes. And we also talk about five tastes in harmony, cooking methods, and the choices of seasoning. In the next session, we will talk about eight cuisines in China. Thank you for your attention.